Looking forward to that <clears throat> beginning next Sunday, talking about going deeper in our relationship with the Lord and ending the month with our baptism we call Submerged. We'll do in the fountains right out front. Summer weather makes it perfect for us to have that experience. So if you've not been baptized, think about that, planning toward the last weekend in the month of August. And don't forget, as was mentioned, the time change of our service schedule begins next Sunday. So you've been coming at 11. You'll have options to either come a half hour sooner at 10.30 or an hour later at noon. So it should work either way to figure out which one of those to attend. It's the same format, same worship team and all in both of those services, 10.30 and noon. Just opens up our options uh, coming a little later in the day has been an advantage for some that have missed it since we um, went away from that a couple of years ago. So we're going back to what was really gaining momentum and giving, giving that option. 10.30 or noon, same experience, same format. Today we finish up our simple living theme with the topic of thanksgiving. Simply thankful. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 6 in the New International Version reads this way, So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. Overflowing with thankfulness because we've been filled with the presence of Jesus in our life. Nothing better to be thankful for than having his grace cover us. In the message translation, those same two verses read this way. It just gives another way of looking at the same theme. My counsel for you is simple and straightforward. Just go ahead with what you've been given. You received Christ Jesus, the master. Now live him. You're deeply rooted in him. You're well constructed upon him. You know your way around the faith. Now do what you've been taught. School's out. Quit studying the subject and start living it. And let your living spill over into thanksgiving. I love the way that that's constructed, that we have a great foundation through Jesus that has come into our hearts and lives. We learn about him, and we should continue to learn, but we should also be practicing what we've learned Sometimes we keep going on and wanting to know more without putting into play the things that we were taught last week. He's saying to us, don't forget to do the things that you've already laid hold of and let your life spill out, overflow with a spirit of thankfulness. One chapter later in the book of Colossians, it seems like the writer of this book to the church had the theme of thanksgiving on him and it continues. Chapter 3 and verse 15, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. It seems almost like a command, do this, be thankful. I believe we need it sent to us that way because we don't naturally fall into the mode of positive thinking, of thankful conversations. In fact, our natural default is to get negative. Things happen, we complain about it. Somebody says something we don't like, we talk about it. There are all kinds of things that go wrong around us, and if we're not careful, those things capture our attention and our thoughts, and we can talk about negative things all day long and get all fired up about the things that we're against, when in reality, what we should be having happen through this conversation and through this encouragement, exhortation, like command and be thankful. We need to be told to be that because we're not naturally put together that way. I want to be. I want to be thinking positive thoughts. I want to be speaking thankful things to the people around me. That should be a common expression that spills out of me. And something that I'm encouraged to talk to you about today, simple living means Let's be simply thankful and let it grow in our lives to become a part of who we really are. The next chapter in Colossians, chapter 4 and verse 2 says, Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. We need to devote to prayer because there's a lot of things to pray about. 
A lot of things in the world need God's touch and his help. Be devoted to prayer and watchful because there's a lot of things to watch out for. But then tack on being thankful to all that. It is a capstone that keeps us focused in the right place that we would always be thankful. And one more verse, Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 28. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe. When we started our worship today, Doug is faithful week to week to say, here's what we're here for. We're here to say to God, thank you. We're thankful for what you mean to us, what you have done in our life. And it is the core of worship is expressing our gratitude and being simply thankful is a life transforming principle to get deeply rooted in us. Four things I'd like to build upon today that are benefits of having a life built around being thankful. Gratitude opens the door to good relationships. If you want to attract friends, possibly the, the strongest attribute that would be attractive to people that you would want to have a relationship with is to be thankful toward them. That your communication with others is about what you appreciate about them, how you enjoy their presence, what it is about doing life that you're grateful for. The more we're thankful, the more connecting that is to the people around us. Being thankful, having an attitude of gratitude will build good relationships. Late this week, our daughter and son-in-law went on a trip to a, a high school reunion. Joe's 20-year high school reunion was up in Oregon. And so they went up for it for the weekend. And on Thursday night, they dropped off their two kids, two of our grandkids, for us to take care of for about three days. We have them until tonight at about 6 o'clock. <laughs> Not counting the time. It's, if this service goes long, there's no reasons except it just shortens the afternoon for me a little bit. It's all good. We love them and we love having them. Although it is a different lifestyle for us now that we don't have kids in our house, it's a game changer and it is an energy drainer, and yet it's all good. I'm telling you, it's all good, right? <laughs> Thursday night, they dropped them off and left, and we were having a wonderful time. We do love them with all of our heart, and it was good times. And then all of a sudden, without any reason, nothing happened to change the atmosphere. One of the two kids started talking back. There wasn't even anything to talk back about. His just attitude flipped from being pleasant and everything's cool to being, who are you? Where did this kid come from? Like, it was crazy. It's not like him even. It's not his natural way. He's a good communicator, thoughtful, pleasant, and suddenly it became like, can't figure out what's going on. And he was talking back to my wife and I was in the room, but trying not to pay attention. I, I didn't want to be responsible. And finally, she looks at me and like, you think maybe you, you could help out here? Like, yeah, I guess so. So I was feeling like the kid needed some discipline. But, you know, you're a grandparent. I don't like to be the disciplinarian. It's not my role in that relationship. So I don't take that place. Yet you have to have some degree of it. I felt like providing some. It was starting to rise up in me, but I didn't want to. So finally I'm like, okay, come with me. And we went to another part of the room. We ended up in the kitchen at the kitchen table. And he went around behind it. And I was on the other side of it. And he's talking back to me now. Now I'm the object of whatever this was. I, I can't, couldn't figure it out. I kind of conclude now after the fact his parents had left and I think he just started missing them. And who knows, just something flipped inside and he couldn't figure out how to get out of that mode. It was just this constant talk back. And he's good at it. He's a good communicator. <laughs> it was crazy, like, wow, unbelievable. So we're trying to talk our way through it and finally saying, well, we're going to stay here until you change your attitude. As soon as you speak kindly like you normally do. This isn't even you. I don't know who this is, but it's not you. 
and you need to apologize to Mamo, apologize to me, and we can move on. And he's talked back to me a little bit more. It was weird. I'm like, all right, well, here we sit here. It's like, I'm okay with that. I can sit here longer than you can. I said, oh, yeah, try it. <laughs> it was a standoff, man. It was just a... I had my phone with me, so I was fine with it. I can do emails. I can check the sports scores. He had nothing. He was just sitting there. I can outlast this. This is not a problem. So we sat there. Every once in a while, he'd say something not cool, and I would try to figure it out, say something back, let him know that I'm committed. And probably 45 minutes, literally, at least, we had this standoff, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, it was quiet for a little bit, and out of nowhere, he says to me, in a really kind of soft, kind way, Papa, I'm sorry, I apologize. I did the wrong thing. I'm like, wow, where'd that come from? Now it's just, that's the kid I know. I'm like, it's all right, I forgive you. We can move past this, it's hugs, we got hugs, and everything flipped from being totally a mess to being perfect. And he just went on from there, had a great couple of days. We've had a wonderful couple of days all the way into the day. They're in the children's program this morning. And it was wonderful, but it, I felt like it was a God-given sermon illustration for today to say, I know the feeling of someone that's not thankful is not someone I want to be around. My grandkid that I love with all my heart was in a bad place and it was very repulsive and it was repelling. And suddenly when the attitude changed and his spirit was soft and he was thankful, thankful we were there, thankful we were working together, loving and his responses, then we felt drawn together and man, it was a powerful drawing together. That love just like swoops in and captures you and you feel it so deeply inside. And what was the difference? The attitude of being grateful or one of not. And if we hold on to a negativity in our spirit and we're talking smack all the time to the people around us and all we can get out is stuff that we don't like and we don't like what they're doing and we don't like what's going on over here. And we just complain about everything going on in the world. All that does is send out skunk repellent. It's like nobody wants to be around that. I just experienced it with a person that I love with all my heart. And as soon as that spirit changed, everything's perfect. I believe that's true about being simply thankful. When we're simply thankful, it connects us to people at home, at work. When we're thankful for the people around us, we'll be drawn together to be a good team. At church, when we're with each other and we're thankful, it draws us together. When we talk to God and we're thankful in our conversation with God, we're drawn, he's drawn to us as well in a beautiful way. Thanksgiving has that kind of power. Second, gratitude enhances empathy and reduces aggression. When we're grateful and thankful in our heart and in our expressions, we gain more empathy for the people around us that might be going through hard times. When somebody has something going wrong inside of them and they can't seem to help it, I actually know what that feels like. Sometimes I can get into a funky mood can't figure out quite how I got there and not sure quite how to get out of it. And I need to try to flip the switch and figure out how to come back into that place of gratitude. It gives me empathy for the people around me and it reduces the aggressive nature that sometimes we can get into. If we're ungrateful, we start being the judge and jury of everything going on around us. We think we know everything. When someone is real harsh and real negative in their thoughts, they position themselves like they don't have anything to learn, they know everything, and everything in the world is wrong but them. And when we're thankful, it opens up our heart to be kind, to be considerate, to, to bring people together that need our assistance and need our help. And even if someone's in the wrong place, we're not so against them because we're so fired up. Instead, our spirit of thanksgiving can actually draw down the anguish that the other people around us might have. It's a very powerful attribute. That's why we're taught to have it. Gratitude improves self-esteem. There's something about 
knowing who we are in relationship to God and his grace that causes us to grow in the sense of our own value. If we are ungrateful and we become negative in the way we are conversing, we really don't feel good about ourselves. There's something going on inside that we're not happy about who we are. And when we stop and think about God's grace and what he's done for us and the gift we have and our sins are forgiven and we change our attitude from being so negative to being grateful, our sense of worth grows. When I'm thankful, I feel better about me. I feel like I'm in the right place, that I understand who I am and that I am someone God wants to use to touch the world. Communion, Holy Communion is a beautiful opportunity for us to grow in our expression of thanksgiving to God and to grow in our sense of value and worth. We're going to have that opportunity together here today. I'd like to invite those that are helping to serve to come and begin that process to pass the communion out to you. When it comes your way, just hold on to the wafer and to the cup and we're going to sing a song of thanksgiving to God together. Focus our attention in on him. And let our sense of value rise from deep within today. Whatever you're going through, whatever your life has been like in the last hours or days, it's time to slow it down, reflect on the goodness of God and what Jesus has done for us, and receive of his grace right now, right here in this moment.